Good afternoon to you, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to another edition of Midi Life. And as we say, every time that you get up from your bed and decide to go about your daily activities, what is it that comes to mind? What are those things that you have actually armed yourself with to make sure that you achieve your goals, you achieve your dreams? You know, if there's one thing I know about the young is that they don't know enough to be prudent. And that is why they go about daring and at the end of the day, they succeed. Yeah, they, they begin to or they get to achieve what we might consider impossible. Our guest of today is called Ateki Seta Caxton, and he is one who went forth, he conquered, and today he is here to tell us his story. He is a social activist and also part of New Seta. He is here to tell you that there is nothing that is impossible and also to give you the tips on how to conquer as well. You're watching the program Media Live on the CRTV at the heart of the nation, and we are here to inspire you. Okay. You all are welcome back and as I told you, today we are going to try as much as possible to inspire you. You know we are in the month of February and when we think about the month of February, what comes to our minds in Cameroon is the 11th of February where we get to celebrate the youth and empower them with what they are going to need to be able to become better people in the future. And as we say, this time around it is the 56th edition of the Youth Day and there is something that we are going to be talking about, volunteering as well as thinking about the challenges that we have the major if i can put it that way the major challenges that we have in the country as far as the youth is concerned but first let's find out what we're going to be eating in the kitchen and right after that we are going to continue with the program as usual et leontine est là pour nous salut leontine comment tu vas j'espère que tu n'es pas timide non ça va être. ok merci beaucoup qu'est ce que tu vas nous proposer aujourd'hui euh, Aujourd'hui, au menu, nous avons du crème sauté aux crevettes accompagné de frites de manioc. Ah, je pense que ça fait grandir, surtout, oui, oui les jeunes doivent grandir. Oui. <rire> Et pour cela, on a besoin de quoi comme ingrédient Pour cela, nous avons besoin des feuilles de manioc préalablement cuites, des carottes, oui. des carottes, des tomates, oignons, du manioc et des crevettes. Wow. Ok, et c'est frais Les crevettes sont frais Oui, elles sont toutes frais. Est-ce que tu manges d'habitude ça Oui. <rire> J'aime beaucoup les légumes. Ah oui, c'est ça. Et on, on dit que c'est bon pour la santé. Tout à fait. Pas seulement, mais ici, quand on commence à parler du manioc, on sait que nous sommes au centre. Centre, sud, on consomme beaucoup de manioc. Oui, Là-bas, au sud-ouest, c'est plutôt un, un, un tapioca et couscous. C'est ça. Ok, merci beaucoup Léontine. Merci. Et j'imagine que notre invité va aimer ce que tu es en train de proposer. D'ailleurs, on dit bonjour et bienvenue sur le plateau de Midi Live. Good afternoon to you, Ateki. Uh, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. We're happy to have you. Thank you. So, how have you been? Um, well, uh, I spent like uh, the few days uh, past just celebrating my <coughs> birthday. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm one year older today. I, yeah. I was. Um, I just had to share to, to spend the day uh, with uh, some kids at an orphanage. Uh, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sharing the little that I could have with them. And, uh, oui. Yeah. Okay. That that's very nice because you know when we think about birthdays. Men always say only ladies celebrate their birthdays and that we have too many birthdays and at times they become uh, very confused. I think we, we are good to go now because I really want everybody to understand what you're going to be explaining to us this afternoon as far as uh, your career is concerned and the different seminars and workshops that you've been part of because it's about youth empowerment, transformation, anything that has to do with the young but it doesn't mean that the old cannot learn from it. <laughs> yeah. So what were some of the things that happened in the course of your birthday? How did you spend the day with these children? Um, yeah, so basically, I, you know, I was working the whole day and then um, like later in the evening, I just had to get to um, this center uh, at Imana. It's uh, Centre Ophelina uh, Eau Vivre. So, so it's like living water. Uh, 
like an uh, orphanage where I had to kind of like spend some time with the kids and uh, yeah, just uh, had the, the day there, the rest of the evening there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for that precision on how you spent your birthday. Now we get to understand that not just women celebrate their birthday, men too, but in another way, like how you did. Yeah. So, what, did you have any music in the course of that celebration? Um, so, the kids do have like, uh, like, musical instruments that okay you, the play that, that yeah practice actually so wow. it's a very it's a i mean the center is really a, a place where you have kids just trying to get to learn as much as they can i saw some were doing their mm -hmm. class work yes some were learning instruments some were doing some were eating and everything so it was um it was just them getting lots of you know lots of things ongoing but uh, mm. yeah and i just i was really happy to just be a part of that that moment mm -hmm. yeah and it made me to relieve my my childhood actually wow. you know memories of being I young. think we're going to come back to that childhood that was very well spent in Bengui in the northwest region of Cameroon but before that let's have some music because midi life it's the time that gives you the possibility or the opportunity to relax from all the hectic day or hours that you've had since the morning up till 10 no 8 uh 12 30 pardon me till 1 30 at least you have some time to actually forget some of the worries some of the problems and some of the difficulties that you have been having and this afternoon we decided to invite Rostan Toti who is here to play some songs for us and I hope that you're going to like it. Commence toujours comme ça Quand une fille passe devant moi Deux, trois notes de musique Un petit air de ma cosa Une nuit pour s'amuser Quelques semaines pour s'aimer Vient le temps de s'en aller Et là je ne peux plus la quitter Ah 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 Pas mauvais garçon, et ma vie c'est la chanson. Aujourd'hui, si demain là-bas, tu t'aimes chanteur à la fois, c'est l'amour à temps partiel qui m'envoie au septième ciel. Je crains les séparations quand je prends mon billet d'avion. Toti oh, ah ah, ah ah, ah ah, Ça commence toujours comme ça Quand je vais à toi là Je ne peux plus m'en aller Quand j'arrive à Yaoundé J'aime toutes les filles du monde À la salsa à l'Africa Sans perdre une seconde Je serai toujours comme ça ah, 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 ah. Votre partie, voyager et séduire, aimer à mourir, partir sans revenir, quand les travaux seront terminés. Dans mon village, je vais rentrer, accompagné de souvenirs, de la beauté de vos sourires. Votre partie, voyager et séduire, aimer à mourir, partir sans, re sans revenir. Votre partie, voyager et séduire, aimer à mourir, partir sans re Mais depuis que je suis parti, je pense à nos bisous, je pense à nos caresses, je pense à nos câlins. Faudra partir, voyager et séduire, aimer à mourir, partir sans revenir. Pendant longtemps, chérie, j'ai regardé l'horizon, j'ai dû apercevoir tes yeux suppliants et la moyenne, me demandant de venir m'enfermer dans ta cellule corporelle. 
où j'ai pu jamais trouver ma moindre liberté conditionnelle. Signé Rostantoti. Faudra partir, voyager et séduire, aimer à mourir, partir sans, re sans revenir. Oui, oui, oui. Tout, 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 tout. Faudra partir, voyager et séduire, aimer à mourir, partir sans revenir. Wow, thank you very much for that song, Rustan Toti. And it's rather unfortunate that um, you, I want to believe that we, we do have too many problems. Uh, I think we get to, to, to battle every day, be it at work, be it with family, friends. On the streets, it's a battle, I believe. Unfortunately, at times you, you ask yourself, why did I grow up? I just wanted to, to stay a baby because at that time, I really did not have problems apart from looking for food and sleeping. But right now, you have battles that you fight on a daily basis, and it's really not easy. We try as much as possible to keep the smile, but the smile does not always come out like easily as it normally is supposed to. But at the same time, what is it? Life has to go on whether we like it or not. We're talking about you, Bengui, and you as a baby. What even happened to the baby fat, the baby weight that you, you came out with? <laughs> <laughs> well, my mom told me that I, I, I was um, five, I weighed five kilograms when, yes. when, I, when I was born. I probably thought I spent like the nine months just whining and dining. In, in, <laughs> in the there, room. right? In there, ah, actually. I, I understand. I understand. It, it gets to, to happen. But very few children are born that fat. That, that big, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But today, one, for That's one reason record. or the other, you've, the you've, kind of. you've the, <laughs> the fat. You grew up, you were born in Bengui in the Northwest region, and that is where you grew up. So how was it like? How was life like for you while growing up? I had very, um, like, so many, like so many siblings, like uh, there were so many of us growing up. And um, so it was really fun having your brothers and sisters around you yeah. and always, you know, striving over stuff. Uh, and also going to school together, learning from the elderly ones who had, uh, who had gone ahead. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and you know, they inspired me like along the way. One of the one of the moments was when, um, for example, my brother, um, he was like two years ahead of me in yeah. secondary school, for okay. example, and he ran for uh, like school prefect <laughs> in the school. So you were his campaign uh, manager no, like, or so something? He inspired me because he did that and won. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, I have to do the same thing. Aww. So when my time come, uh, came, actually, I was there. Uh, uh, I mean, I had to kind of vie for the post of public relations officer of my school and mm -hmm. run the campaign and won, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the kind of, you know, uh, experiences that really help us to relieve uh, our childhood, it's like going back, you know, in time and then just reaching a region of your life where yeah. lots of fun things happen and you really miss those moments, actually. Now, you studied, you studied like primary, secondary and high school in Bengui, but you had the opportunity of moving around in the Norway because your dad was a teacher. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you had this opportunity, but the first time you left the Norway region was for an excursion. Yeah, so we had like... Uh, since I was doing like uh, the art series, we had the geography uh, mm -hmm. course and there was one that required that we had a field trip. So for the first time I was able to leave like the Northwest, <laughs> went to the West and we saw like the, you know, geographical landscapes that mm -hmm. were very remarkable. We had to go to the, like to the, to Southwest, in, to Edeno, for example, yeah. where I saw, um, you know, very large fishes that were being caught <laughs> from the sea. It was, it was really striking. I mean, there was a fish that was bigger than me. Oh like really? really? Yeah, but my size then I was like, <laughs> I was like uh, 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 one meter seventy-two when I was in high school, um, and then I saw fish that was longer than me and bigger than me. I was like, wow, this is for the first time. So it was really something. Um, I remember my geography teacher, uh, Mr. Chebokum, who, um, you know, I don't know where he would be now, but actually <laughs> he really inspired us, um, you know, in the course of ge geography teaching and a lot of them also who taught us the other. Uh, the other courses oh, yeah okay. very very inspiring teachers i think they were the ones who really contributed to mold us and 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 bring us to where we we, we, we are today so after you left anyway she had the opportunity of visiting the west region and then later the southwest region precisely Faku division and you came back you came back to complete your studies 
after that, you, you thought that the best place was to study in the University of Boya, as we say, the place to, <laughs> the be. Place to be. And that that's place. where you went to. Yes, actually, I, I, I went to UB um, and I read, um, I read history and, uh, well, a couple of courses. So we, I was really interested in, like, you know, uh, our own history, African history, and, yeah. you know, the idea that we have lots of things that were not yet explored. So I had to kind of try to do um, archaeology, but mm -hmm. we did it for first and second year. Then third year, I was also very interested in uh, international relations and international organizations that kind of really, you know, while you're focused on Africa, you should know that Africa also has mm -hmm. some responsibility towards the world. So you need to also, you know, embrace the world. And so the third year, we kind of like looked at political science and yeah. courses in, in international organizations. And okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you told yourself, because it's... it's um, I want to believe that you you were or you are blessed. Why do I say so? Many students go into the university to study one thing or another because maybe somebody they knew studied this particular course or they are looking like, okay, my friend is doing this, so let me just go ahead and do. But you went into the university with a focus. Yeah. You wanted to study the history of Cameroon, of Africa, yeah. and then you believed that there was an extension to yeah. this history that you needed to know about. Yeah. After having some courses in the University of Boya, you decided that Eric was the best place yeah. for you to be able to extend yeah. your scope. And that is where you found yourself three years after the yeah. university. Yeah. So yeah. I, I came to do the course uh, International uh, Cooperation Decentralized uh, Action in Eric. Yeah. Um, that is a very important course for our world today because it, uh, it gives you um, some ideas about the transitioning that has to happen uh, in terms of moving from our linear way of consuming, our yeah. linear economy to more of a secular economy today where uh, we need to think about, you know, the waste that we, for example, we just, you know, so you kind of extract, use and dump, mm -hmm. extract, use and dump. But That's then it. there's, in other places you can, you see them extracting, using, then not dumping, but recycling to use again. That is you know, it. St stuff like that. So it's a secular um, kind of economy. And I think that way it's more sustainable because it really re reduces the, the impact that we have on our on our environment, which, is, which I think is a very important um, uh, element of our life, which we have to really protect and care about. Okay, yeah. Leontine, oui, qu'est-ce que tu es en train de faire maintenant parce qu'on suit les bruits? Tu es en train de faire revenir les légumes, okay, pour finir avec le pémal intérieur. Ah, okay. Ah, j'ai déjà, je sens déjà ce qui vient de là. Et c'est tellement bon, je ne peux même pas attendre pour manger quelque chose. C'est bientôt prêt. <laughs> ok, merci beaucoup Léontine. Do you usually cook? Do you cook? When I was like single, I... No, 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 no don't no tell choice. me the issue of single and married and all of that. So, like, ok, so you stopped cooking when you got married. No, no, it's not like I was... I mean, I, I, I fully cooked when I, was, when I was single, but now, I mean, like, sometimes I would... Um, yeah, I would give my wife a helping hand to... Ok. To, yeah, to cook actually. But I, I used to cook when I was... Uh, you know, in the university, yeah, no choice. Like I mean. what? What did you used to cook when um, you were a student? Um, so, yeah, I mean, honestly, I would say that I was not really, um, I was not very good expert. I would, to be honest, that's one thing I was confessed. So, um, um, so it's not like I was always cooking burnt offerings. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but even nantare, you couldn't cook. No, I, I did. It's just that I had an allergy. Like, oh, so okay, whenever, cocoa yams. Yes, yeah, when I peel. Them. Mm -hmm. So I had like some, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> affecting my hands. So very often I like put, you know, plastic bags around yeah. my hands to cook okay. that. But, um, so that's what kind of, but even though I enjoyed eating the food, but I, it's usually when my mom cooks it, but I would, you know, I used to cook like gari and arrow gari. And oh, I really? Okra, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, that's nice. That's Very few people can really go to that level, apart from maybe mixing curry and sugar and all of that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, although that was also part of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, you, as I say, the young shall grow. You had all these experiences as a student, and then when you came into the world, the job market, into the world or the career world, you saw yourself like somebody who should also teach the younger ones how to build a career as you have been able to do for yourself. But let's start with the fact that you are a social activist. Who is a social activist, by the way? I, I think it's a, a social activist would be someone who uh, recognizes the problems that they have around their society and decides to invest themselves in finding some sort of a solution to those that problems. That is it. Yeah, I think that is, a, um, yeah, that's what really drives someone to invest themselves in, in the social uh, field. Um, so when I left university, I saw that basically 
you know, because I didn't, it was not very easy also getting a job, you know. Mm -hmm. So I realized that we young people have the same problems and um, sometimes the idea is not to wait and see whether something will change, but sometimes you need to just um, get right to work and find a solution sometimes yourself. Um, in the process, you might end up helping many other people. Uh, and that's how, you know, I realized that we had issues relating to, I mean, yep. young people's um, unemployment, we had issues relating to even political participation. Obviously. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, witnessing some of the elections that happened in, in the country back then, young people were not really, you know, they were not, there, they were kind of like underrepresented. To yeah. Say so yeah, but um, I, I thought that was uh, not very, you know, not very cool because uh, this is a country that is the inheritance of young people, right? And being our inheritance, we need to kind of show more responsibility towards, you know, preserving it towards... Uh, Normally. Yeah, towards, uh, you know, getting to participate in the public life, to um, understand the different stakes of development and to be able to articulate ourselves as young people who can who can propose solutions and not just wait for, because I mean, the consideration before was that young yeah. people are a subject to be worked upon, right? <laughs> so, whereas we are agents of, you know, and not just, re the, we're not at the receiving end only. We have mm -hmm. lots of things that we can you contribute. Have, you, we have something to contribute exactly. to the growth and, of, and so of was, the society. It was like looking at how we can make sure that we, we articulate young people's voice in all the sticks of development in Cameroon. That's, I think that's what pushed me, especially towards the field of this, this, this sphere of uh, youth political participation, um, you know, and also how we can actually d get to develop our local communities um, and getting young people's voice, not just even at the national level, but also locally, it's very important. Yeah, yeah, it's very important. As they say, locally, I would say, we are the roots. When you talk about the local participation, it's like the root to the tree yeah. or the root of the tree. And if you don't start from the roots or if the roots are not really planted into the soil, yeah. then it will be easy to uproot the yeah, tree. Exactly. So I believe that it, it starts from home and then it can spread. We have spoken a lot about the youth this afternoon and talking about the 56th edition of uh, this year. That's uh, the 11th of February. We are celebrating the 56th edition. Yeah. And it is under the theme, Youth and Voluntary Participation in the Major Challenges of Cameroon. So we do understand the challenges that we face as uh, youth and it's important for us to volunteer to be able to help out in solving the problems the challenges that we are facing in our country and i believe that that's what you have been doing a lot not just as a social activist but also as a part of new setup talking about new setup what is it um so new setup uh, is uh, a network Network for Solidarity, Empowerment and Transformation for All. So just the first letters would be Networks New, uh, and then Solidarity, Empowerment and Transformation, the first letters would make the setter. So mm -hmm. it's new setter. Um, basically, and that's your name. <laughs> <laughs> What's a coincidence kind of, yeah. So, but, um, new setter basically works on, different, on three different um, areas. Number one is capacity building for uh, for young people and local institutions. Number two is you know promoting research and, and doing some advocacy okay. policy wise. And uh, and number three is uh, promoting peace and democracy, uh, which is which are really critical concerns for Cameroon today uh, as well. So um, uh, so what what we we've done so far um, in some of these areas have been. Uh, yeah, so many things. Yeah. Uh, we've developed different programs for young people uh, today in Cameroon. One of the programs that we have, um, which will actually be taking place at the end of the month of February this month, mm -hmm. um, is uh, repair. Like the first phase of that program, repair is rebuilding peace through actions with inclusive reach. Yeah. We we bring young thought leaders from all the ten regions of Cameroon to uh, build their skills, values, and knowledge and awareness on particular, you know concerns of society and how they as young people can craft new solutions okay. around those problems and the program is really uh, structured in an activity oriented way in such a way that once they finish the first semester of the program they go back to the regions and carry out mandatory okay. uh, programs where wow. they bring their pairs mm -hmm. and, and share the knowledge that they've, uh, they've acquired okay. and it's on, like only after doing that activity and reporting to us that mm -hmm. we invite them to the second phase of the program okay. um, and so they have some sort of proof to yes, show that, that they didn't you, just keep it you didn't just keep it yourself. Okay. yeah so 
um, and then at the second phase of the program, the Minister of uh, um, Youth, uh, Youth Affairs and Civic Education basically, um, you know, signs the certificates that they receive at the end of the program. Wow. For that, yeah, for repair, it's a, it's a very, you know, strong partnership and collaboration that we've enjoyed since the start of the program in 2015. And today we are like seven uh, batches of repair. Wow. That have passed. And, That's and nice. But you know, we all cannot be part of repair and the different workshops that you get to organize and the seminars as well. So tell us some of the things that you get to do, the activities you carry out so to help youth and also to help us. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think one of the areas that we've also um, tried to tackle activities lately is about how to get young, young people to really have a more amplified voice in local development. Okay. You know, since the, you know, talking about even volunteer, voluntarism, like mm -hmm. the theme of the Youth Day mentioned. Obviously, um, yeah. The, the government adopted a uh, law in 2020 uh, on volunt voluntarism in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. It's a new law, and I think it really gives some of those... Um, um, areas where young people can really volunteer mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's it I think I think this uh, really this activity and the team is really a follow-up on on that uh, on that particular um, that particular law yes. and then uh, you also have like the new law on decentralization I think that law is is gives uh, article 4041 really talks about participation mm -hmm. which are really core elements of of, uh, of of development so one of the things that we decided to do was to um, find a way to um, plug in young people in the local processes of development. Okay. So we brought them to a program. So we, we call this program AVEC Logo. So amplifying voices and enhancing capacities for mm -hmm. local governance. So um, AVEC Logo had a, like a two-prong strategy. We brought young people, trained them on on, uh, on different styles of community engagement. So there was something peculiar we told them called community mapping. Okay. So they go back to their regions or the communities where they come from and they map out the, the area, looking at the problems that exist, and then prioritizing these problems okay. to see the most important one um, that that the, a solution more like be. a scale of preference exactly. And then okay. from that particular, after prioritizing the problem, we taught them how to develop a project proposal around those problems in okay. such a way that they have a very strategic solution that they can propose. Mm -hmm. And then in the second strategy, we had municipal councillors come for their own uh, training as well. And then in this, during the course of this training, we had, the, on the third day, because we trained them for three days, on okay. the third day we had like, um, what we call the mayor's round table. The mayor's round table brought these youth yeah. and, the, and the priorities that they had identified in the communities, and then put them face to face with the mayors and the, yeah. and the municipal councillors. And you know, once these young people were able to articulate those problems, there was, a, a, for example, um, the mayor of Bamenda Three mm -hmm. was in the hall, was like a participant for the <laughs> mayor's training. So there was a participant, a youth participant who had done like a community map in Bamenda Three area, mm -hmm. came and did a presentation. Um, around uh, the, you know the problems, the challenges that she uh, looked at, and then prioritized water issues. Once she made that presentation, the mayor got up and said mm -hmm. he had to articulate himself on that particular issue that the lady had raised. And three weeks after the program, three weeks after the program, you could see that the the, the lady wrote to us like, "This is the, the impact yeah, that you get." Yeah, this is the outcome the, the, of the, the presentation. The mayor has come actually and installed like water. You know, wow, in, 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 that is the, it. In the areas that she actually. So that is how you deliberate like in a very intentional process connect young people to processes of development i think honestly it's uh, one of the things that really demonstrated the the, the impact that that kind of mm -hmm. putting young people and their leaders together yeah. to think and to contribute for those who did not have for example the opportunity to have these programs uh, maybe funded or Im uh, implemented in their communities yeah now the budgetary sessions of the municipal councillors uh, or municipal councils were uh, in november so we did this training in august so for some of the projects that they, they did present, mm -hmm. the mayors took them actually and they were going to be elements where they would actually discuss during their budgetary sessions, integrate them in the budgetary sessions and then perhaps the next following year they can actually... Don't we all start from somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, so it's, uh, all, uh, because some people find it very difficult starting and it's also very difficult to start. Yeah. But when you start, then you see that things start falling in place and then life becomes easier. Yeah, we are talking about volunteering. We are talking about the 56th edition of the Youth Day Year in Cameroon. And it's all about youth and voluntary. Voluntary, don't forget. Voluntary participation in the major challenges in Cameroon. So we are not forcing you. The government is not forcing you. But as a human being, as a Cameroonian, exactly. you do know that you have to contribute your exactly. bit, right? As far as the development of our country is concerned. And most especially as far as the challenges that our country has been facing and continues to face. So 
hey, just take your own drop of water. Don't mind about the next person. Just try your own bit. And then we'll see how we can work something out at the end of the day. You are watching Midi Live on the CR TV. And a jiffy away, Ruth Angel joined us. And she has something very interesting to tell us this afternoon. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Gwen. Hello, Atiki and Rostan and to all our guests on Midi Life, I'll say plus the chef, that's who, who I was including. Thank you for having me. Today we're going to be talking about something which is very pertinent and important for the youth. I'm talking about job interviews. Now, we don't talk fashion here because we only have to dress up and step out, but you need to really look presentable when you're stepping out for a job interview. Today, my focus will be based on professional job interviews because there are other kinds of job interviews which you might probably want to step out for. Probably you're interviewing or you're going in um, for a position as a chef in a restaurant. We'll be looking at that some other day. But the first thing you need to understand is that what's the best outfit for a job interview? The answer will be depending on the kinds of job you are applying for just like I said and dressing appropriate is important because the first judgment and interviewer will make um, will go about your dress and how you present yourself that is also important because it's not only your IQ they're trying to look they're trying to look at if you are going to represent better your company yourself we are on the youth week and I'm addressing to some of those youths who are vying for a position in one of their dream companies now you should pay very good attention. It is important to get a sense of corporate culture um, before you head out for a job interview. That is very important. So the company which you are applying for, it's very important you understand your dress code, how they ought to look Mondays through Fridays. I know banks, they have to dress um, with suits and on Friday is the same thing. Or maybe Friday, they step it down a little bit and look casual or they decide to pick the African culture so that the corporate culture is very important. So different industries have different expectations, like I said earlier on, and candidates and employees should dress appropriately. And then they say, when in doubt, please just drip dress up never you dress down so if you are thinking that probably you are not very confident about your corporate culture just step it up a little it's better to look overdressed than underdressed trust me it always works great and then i will be giving you a few tips on some of the things you should look when you're um, going in for a corporate interview i'm addressing myself to the men and i'll, I'll be addressing the women some of other time and probably those who are trying to apply for very casual jobs or for different kind of jobs which are still jobs but not very much in the corporate field so for you the man is suit in a solid color such as navy black or dark gray is very great if you choose those colors know that you're going to stand out your confidence level you also we also know that when you are um, going for an interview you're probably stressed so you must be sweating perspiration so these colors are always good because the kind of height that your interviewer will not know that you are going through under stress or some kind of anxiety or nervousness so you choose the color navy black all dark gray and then another thing you have to go you go for long sleeve shirt that is white or color coordinated with the suit that means you have to choose something that matches your suit because another thing is to dress your color does not have to be um, you wear green over probably pink it wouldn't definitely go have a leather belt on a very great one not very expensive but it should be clean very appropriate you have a tie a very adjusted and very good tie preferably just go with black neutral colors are always good and then you can take uh, maybe your socks should mostly be dark and very very conservative trust me Those wear something that is so loud because that's the first thing they are going to notice just um dark socks and conservative conservative socks i beg your pardon um with leather shoes because um you don't want to create so much noise and so much attention and then little or no jewelry do not have them on. You can probably have your wristwatch, something that goes on with your suit. And then you should also have a 
clean, a, a very neat professional hairstyle, please, you can do the dreadlocks. But if you are doing a dreadlock, that's why I say the corporate culture from the very onset is very important. You should understand or fi try to find out if um, they have employers or employees, rather, who have dreadlocks on, but it has to be very, very neat and very, very professional. You can go with the low curve, the bull zero, whatever works better for your face. And then you have to have a limited amount of aftershave. That is the scent you wear doesn't have to be very conspicuous. Wear something that is a bit on the low, something that's for the afternoon or something that's very light. And then you should also have neat nails because you don't know what your interviewer will be looking at. Your nails have to be neat. And then to clam it and just um, finish it up, you should have a portfolio or a briefcase. Trust me, you're going to look good for the job. And then that's already a plus before you start getting on the IQ part or the intelligentsia part and then your interview will be tick for the day. So youth, if you are having one of these opportunities, just pay attention and then know that you've learned a thing or two on Middle Life this afternoon. Wow, thank you very much, Ruth Angel. Mm -hmm. What you have just told us is very important. You know, many people go out job searching and they go back to the house asking themselves, why that person and not me? Mm -hmm. But as they say, Albert will always tell you, Albert Jambon will always <laughs> tell you that there is always, always marks for general presentation. Mm -hmm. So they just see you coming and you inspire this confidence with the way you look and your employer says, no, I want to go for that one. Even before listening or before you opening your mouth so you should be very careful the way you look like when you're going for a job interview. And not just that, for anything, eh, anything. Yeah. You should never be caught on fresh. Yes, never be caught on fresh <laughs> like my kid sister will say. Today I decided to do um, the student look because we're in the youth week and I'm dedicating this hairdo to Myra Gong. She's our production <laughs> assistant. And I should say thank you for making me not wear a wig <laughs> this afternoon. Okay, thank you all so very much. Thank you. Thank Thank you once again. And um, our chef was very fast. Leontine, c'était très rapide aujourd'hui avec toi. Et je vois que nos euh, maniocs sont déjà cuits et prêts. Qu'est-ce qui reste à ajouter sur le plat? Là, il reste juste le, le pain. Le pain déjà sauté. OK. Est-ce qu'on peut voir cuit. comment ça se passe? OK. Ça. Et pendant ce temps, je pense qu'on va demander une fois de plus à Rostan Totti de nous jouer une autre chanson parce que, comme on dit souvent, quand tu manges et tu écoutes de la bonne musique, ça passe plutôt vite et c'est plus appétissant. Kérosène équilibre. Quand je pense à mon passé et tout ce que j'ai traversé Je mets genoux à terre pour rendre gloire à Dieu Quand je pense à mon passé et tout ce que j'ai traversé Je mets genoux à terre pour rendre gloire à Dieu Il y en a qui ont dit je ne peux pas Il y en a qui ont douté de moi Tout ça parce que moi j'étais rien Car en vérité mes amis moi je viens de loin Le pétrole du village est devenu kérosène Ma vie est une bénédiction Un enfant de Dieu ne peut jamais échouer Moi ma vie est une bénédiction Un enfant de Dieu ne peut jamais échouer Yo lélé oh, ma vie a changé oh Yo lélé oh, aujourd'hui j'ai triomphé oh Yo lélé oh Ma vie a changé, oh, yo lélé, oh, aujourd'hui j'ai triomphé, oh. J'étais dans l'obscurité, on me refuse une ampoule. Aujourd'hui, grâce à Dieu, je prie parmi les étoiles. Toujours chez les grands, jamais cité chez les petits, non, non, c'est pas une prétention, ma vie est une bénédiction. Kiki Benzeni, ta vie a changé, oh. Yo lélé, oh. Aujourd'hui tu as triomphé, oh. Car en vérité, les amis, moi je viens de loin. Le pétrole du village est devenu kérosène. Yo lélé, oh. Ma vie a changé, oh. 
Yo le leo, aujourd'hui tu as triomphé oh. Yo le leo, ma vie a changé oh. Yo le leo, aujourd'hui j'ai triomphé oh. Or, hommage à notre capitaine Courage, un enfant qui n'était rien, qui est devenu grand garçon. À Bouchouchou. Ça c'est pour Abouchouchou. Il était dans l'obscurité, on n'y avait pas une ampoule. Aujourd'hui, grâce à Dieu, il brille parmi les buteurs. Toujours chez les grands, jamais cité chez les petits. Non, non, c'est pas une prétention, sa vie est une bénédiction. Vincent Aboubaka, ta vie a changé, oh. Yo, lélé, oh. Aujourd'hui, tu as triomphé, oh. Car en vérité, les gars, j'ai dit, il vient de loin. Le pétrole du Nord est devenu meilleur buteur. Yo lélé oh, sa vie a changé oh. Yo lélé oh, aujourd'hui c'est à bout chouchou oh. Yo lélé oh, sa vie a changé oh. Yo lélé oh, aujourd'hui j'ai triomphé oh. La canne est sucrée oh. Tiki tiki tiki, abba tiki abba tiki. Yo lélé oh, ma vie a changé oh. Yo lélé oh, aujourd'hui j'ai triomphé oh Yo lélé oh, ma vie a changé oh Yo lélé oh, ramenez-nous ramenez -nous vite la canne oh On veut la coupe là Thank you, thank you very much for that song We are thanking all those who participated in one way or the other And the youth were there to give their participation in all the ways possible Especially when we talk about the fan club Now I think that our food is ready, Leontine Merci beaucoup pour cette nuit, c'est vraiment coloré et c'est vraiment décoré Et j'imagine qu'on peut toujours manger ça au cascade de fundi, c'est ça non Ok, merci beaucoup et merci à toi, chef Achille Mosoko, parce que c'est grâce à toi qu'on a Leontine cet après-midi et c'est grâce à toi qu'on a beaucoup, beaucoup des autres émissions et des autres éditions de Midi Live. Maintenant, nous sommes en train de parler de ce que les jeunes font et ce qu'ils doivent continuer à faire pour notre pays, le Cameroun. Et euh, il y a toujours Ateki Seta, Caxton, qui est avec nous cet après-midi. And we were talking about what you've been doing for the youth what you are doing and what you're going to continue doing. And as I'm going to say, your work has been talking for you. It has been speaking for you. And that is why you found yourself in the state that was in 2016 and later in 2019. In 2020, you were in Europe. Still to talk about the youth and what they have been doing, especially here in Cameroon. And then in 2021, October, to be precise, you met with Emmanuel Macron for the France-Africa Summit. So tell us about that. Um, yeah, so maybe I just uh, go back to the well to the U.S. experience. Actually, okay. um, uh, I was a Hofford Youth Fellow um, at the National Endowment for Democracy, uh, basically the World Movement for Democracy Secretariat. The, this is a program that selects like two people from the whole world. Oh. Um, and fortunately, I was one of them. So it was kind of a real uh, from Kamé to yeah, be precise. From, from, yeah, from Kamé. <laughs> the other person I think was a, uh, a journalist from the Philippines, and um, later on we had a lady from uh, Nepal. So uh, it was quite a quite a thing for me, um, and then later on I was a, a fellow at Stanford Stanford University in California, and I think that university by then was like ranked like the best university in the United States uh, then, um, where I had to, to do um, the Draper Hills Fellowship at the Freeman Spogli Institute at Stanford University, and then um, in 2021 I well I had the opportunity to um, to represent Cameroon at the uh, uh, Montpellier Summit. How did you get to be the representative of Cameroon? Um, I would say I didn't really even know how it happened, <laughs> honestly, because, uh, yeah, so that was a question that we later on asked the, the people at the French Embassy, and they told us that there was a committee that selected, like, wow. Cameroon had one of the largest delegations there. Cameroon had, like, 80 people who left from here to uh, Montpellier, and uh, and then the, 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 the summit organizers really wanted like a young participant from Cameroon to be able to debate with the president. Okay. And so yeah, they told mm. us that they sent like several names from the, well, the committee had selected 80 and then they selected a few from the 80 and, and proposed the names to the organizing committee and then the organizing committee actually got back to them and, uh, you know, and said that this is our choice. 
So I didn't. I think I, I'm going to give you some time to, to switch off your phone because you know how it works now. When some somebody who knows you sees you on television, that I know him, I know him. Let me show that I know him. Let me call him, and you see as he will pick. Exactly. But unfortunately, we're not going to pick your call this afternoon. Sorry, <laughs> we, he's going to call you back just immediately after the program. But yeah, you were saying something about yeah. yeah. So um, so after we went for uh, the summit, um, uh, so like I just knew that I was going to be speaking with the like 11 other youths from Africa okay. uh, who are going to be debating with the president and so I knew that like a week before before the, the event mm -hmm. after the you know they got back to me and then so I had to go to France like earlier so we had a session first with the president in um, in at the, at the LEC where we had to kind of like have an avant goût of what we were supposed to uh, discuss on Friday uh, which was the day of the summit itself um, so I mean we were really you know the, the, the ambition that we had we knew that we were not like we were not selected by our states for example yes. to go to represent our countries but at that point we really felt like we were mandated you know to carry the voice of you know the sentiment that people feel on the continent and what um, we think should really be the kind of new Frank's Africa relations that is devoid of, you know, the different kinds of narratives that we, we, we do have so, currently. So let's just rewind a little. What did you tell President Emmanuel Macron on that day? Um, so when we first met him at the LEC, one of the things that I raised was, um, well, I wanted him to make an apology to, because, I mean, we, when we think about colonialism in Africa, we think it is, um, it, we think about it as a very negative Mm -hmm. experience. It was a, a moment that really marked a dark period in African and in fact in, in a Cameroonian history for mm -hmm. example. And so a lot of things happened and for me I thought that you know the fact you have to begin by acknowledging that and and, and then you know kind of First of all appease public. the gods yes. before you can tell them before anything. You, yes actually. So <laughs> okay. but, I mean like it was it was not very easy because I think he, he, he expressed something that I thought was <laughs> I don't know, it was a different expression of what I was saying because mm -hmm. I, I was saying that and then he said he doesn't believe in the politics of apology because when somebody comes to apologize, he just wants to make himself look good and wash his hands of the situation and go. Okay. Right. I mean, but he believes in the politics of uh, acknowledgement, which means you have to acknowledge that, yes, these things were, were done, they happened in our past, mm -hmm. but we have to take responsibility to do something about it. Okay. So it was, I mean, to me, I thought, well, maybe we're saying the same thing, but maybe not in really. Different yes, in different ways. In different ways. Yeah. So, and that is, I think that is the spirit with which the summit, um, the summit happened because it was, when you, when you witnessed the debate that happened between us, was, um, were moments of truth. We were telling him like the things that were, you know, were not really cool with the, with the relationship between Cameroon and uh, Africa and France, mm -hmm. and then proposing a new, a new ideal future. And okay. the ideal future would be a future where there is mutual collaboration, mutual definition of what is, you know, what the priorities of collaboration mm -hmm. would be on. And in terms of, um, like, I mean, now it should be about mutual satisfaction. If you're satisfied with the support that you give, and we are satisfied with the results that we're getting on the ground, then that is the that is how we define success. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't just be like you know some one you know one side one sided. Yeah, their, yeah, I understand. Own, yeah, so that is that was the spirit in which uh, um, um, that's all been happened, and you could see the passion. I mean, from some of the different participants from mm -hmm. uh, from um, and something very interesting happened, which I think is very important to say here. Um, after the summit, I think a lot of people said this was uh, probably kind of you know, mise en scène. That's what I heard. Yeah. Right, it was a mise en scène. But on on when we left from the prep from the LEC and we, we came back as a young, eleven people who were you know working, um, the, the so the, a delegation came from the LEC to kind of like listen to what we were saying, and they said we just wanted to you know hear you guys out. Yeah. And then my friend Czech from from Senegal was able to you know stand up and say. I mean, we came here to debate with the president, okay, and not with you guys. So, <laughs> so it's, okay. it, it's not, it's not, yeah, it's not, it's not cool for you to to um to come and 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 sit and listen to us mm -hmm. before you know the summit happens. If that is the way it was supposed to be, I'm ready to leave from here, go back to Senegal, and say I was not at the summit. <laughs> and actually, it was the, you know they said we were just here to not change what you're going to say. It was a summit. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a summit, so we need to make sure that the form is... But at the end of the day, after that, they packed their bags and left. Okay. Yes, and left us alone. So we were able to, to concert on what mm -hmm. we were concerting. So then, to, to yes, say and during and the, the exactly. summit so, and especially so during the debate. So, and that was kind of like the pressure, the kind of moments where you have to make... Uh, you know, decisions at the heat of the moment where you have to really make sure that you're, 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 art, you're, you're articulating yourself, making sure that you're preserving um, your, your own standpoint and it, it's not just washed, you know, in the mix of, mix of things. And, okay, and Ateki, like thank you so very much. After that event that happened on, the, on October uh, 
2021. What next? What are some of the things that you have in mind for the year 2022? Yeah, so I, I think now it's it's kind of exposed us to a kind of really new world because the resolutions that came from the summit um, um, are being worked upon right now. Okay. So the idea is that we really need to be a part of the, the different um, um, resolutions that came out and define mm -hmm. how they implemented. Okay. So, for example, we worked on on the uh, on the the EFD, Agence Française de Développement, which is actually like the a core uh, actor in French foreign uh, relations. Yeah. So we so we are articulating like a new vision for it, even going to be a change of name and all of that. Um, then there's going to be the, the Maison uh, des Mondes Africains, La Diaspora. I think it's a house for African publics and the diaspora where African contribution to the world is going to be celebrated. Like okay. We have a responsibility as Africans to the rest of the world. So we need to be able to... And they have a responsibility towards, towards us as towards well. So as well, yeah. it's, it's a win-win yeah, kind of thing. Exactly. How can we get to you? Um, well, I mean... Social I, media phone numbers, just give them. Yes, yeah, so I actually, um, I on Facebook, my name is Ateki Seta Kaxton. Um, on Twitter, I'm at, at, at Ateki Seta. Uh, my uh, uh, our website for New Seta is www.newseta.org. And my telephone number, the one that is uh, publicly, is 677-91-8765. Can you take that, Oliver? 677-91-8765. Okay, thank right. you so very much, Ateki Seta Kaxton, for coming on the program. Please have a seat. It's lunchtime. Oh, so <laughs> so go ahead, go ahead. Leontine a préparé quelque chose pour toi cet après-midi. Et pour tout le monde qui veut partager, vous pouvez venir ici à midi. Là, nous sommes tellement gentils. While you're going to, to have your food, we're going to ask Rostan Toti to give us his phone number. Yeah, and how we can get to him. Social media, wherever. Uh, vous pouvez me joindre au 691 54-54-27. 691 -54 okay, thank you so very much, Rostan Toti. And back to you, Ateki Seta. What do you think? Have you started? I mean, this looks very exquisite. <laughs> very uh, okay, you're still thinking if you want to dive into it or not. <laughs> no, please, please do and tell us what you think of her food. So, so what are you giving? How many are you giving out on no, tape? This is a 10 on 10. Ah, really? Thank you very much. Oh, my. Okay, thank you all as well. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, M, for staying true to the program Midi Life. It is on the CLTV that everything is happening. And so don't fail to join us for more programs on the station at the heart of the nation. And don't you forget, while you're celebrating the 56th edition of the Youth Day, it's all about participation. Let's come together to be able to find solutions to the major challenges that we are facing in Cameroon. Don't forget, it's always good to keep the smile, take care of you as we take care of us, and dance if you can. Abilito maman Abilito Abilito maman Lutiluano Monge ya kolonengo Lutiluano Mutiluani, anangwane afayo, mutiwano ka. Mutiluani, beza nuza meze, mutiwano ka. Mutiluani, anangaya kolka, mutiwano ka. Show. Abilito, Abilito, maman. Me tire loin, non. Un an, un an, un an, me tire loin, non. Me tire loin, ni. Mes amis, ça me dit, me tire loin, non. Me tire loin, non. Un an, un an, un an, me tire loin, non. Me tiloano, ano mongo ma bulutinga me tiloano ka. Me tiloami nga ano, me tiloani ano. Me tilo shiriwa me, 
ano, metiwani ano. Ibolo ma wuli miso ma ba benga tema ko. Ibolo ma wuli ngongo benga tema ko. Ibolo ma wuli sonu benga tema ko. Ibolo ma wuli miso ma ba benga tema ko. Metiwa shiriwa me ano, metiwani ano. Metiwa minga wa me ano. Metiwani ano. Tiba, 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 has, 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 kes, 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 kes. Ano mga mapayongki, mauke maye. Show. Has, 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 kes, 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 kes. Ano mo na yan ang itengki, mauke maye. Show. Zayin mo nga sila niya ko pa. Zayin mo nga sila niya ko pa. Has, has, has. Kes, 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 kes. Anong wana ya bambi soki makna inye? Show. Zayin mo nga sila niya ko pa O vilash, o vilash, o vilash, o vilash Kes, kes, kes Ma kemaye show. 